Brothers and sisters, good morning. Good morning. Um, it's the month of December, so we're going to... Um, a time when we prepare for Christmas and it's not too early to sing Christmas songs, I was told. So let us prepare our hearts. And the most important thing is that in this Christmas, despite our busyness, we are to make room for our King. We are to make room for our Christ and what the, uh, for the true meaning of Christmas. Let us stand. Let us start our uh, singing of Christmas uh, songs that we already started with our practice for carols, etc. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let souls. Verse 2. <laughs> While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the earth. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness, the wonders of His love, the wonders of His love, the wonders and wonders of His love. Let's sing again. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Savior. Songs employ while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules, He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove. His righteousness, the wonders of His love, the wonders of His love, the wonders, the wonders of His love. Amen. My sisters, let us greet one another. So today we have a special guest, Sister Chunghua, and so let us greet her as well. Amen. Have you served, I'll serve 
Continue to pray. At this time, we approach the season of Christmas, the first week of December, and we remember the 
theme of Christmas, the gift of God's Son to us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not die, but have eternal life. The gift that is free, the gift that is sacrificial, the gift that is willing. And return, in return, we considered our gifts to God. You know, when we come to our offerings, this is not about the tithe. This is not about the one-tenth. This is about our gift, our gifts to God. What we want to give Him to reflect our love for Him, our response to Him, our relationship with Him. What gift will we give to our God today? Not just about the money, but about also our lives, our times, our obedience, our awe. You know, we cannot give to God this way unless our relationship with God is pure, is clear. When we're sure that we are trying to become the people that God wants us to become. That when God tells us areas of wrongs in our lives, that we are willing to face up to it and ask God for help and strength to deal with those difficulties. That as God revealed to us areas in our lives in the past week, in the past days that we have done, things we have done, words we have said, thoughts that we have thought, all these things that dishonor God, that upset at God, hurt at others. Let us come before God for confession, for His forgiveness, for His restoration. For the Bible says God is faithful and just, that as we confess our sins and are willing to come back to Him, He will forgive us and He will receive us back. So we take this moment to pray, to ask God to guide our thoughts, to guide our confessions to Him, to guide our renewal of our relationship with Him. All this before we make our offerings unto God. All this before we give to Him our gifts of love, our gifts of worship and our gifts of devotion. Let us pray as the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now consider our offerings unto God. this time, let us continue to pray, not just an act of making our offerings, but it's our attitude as well. Let's continue to pray, remember the good things that have come from God, 
The times in our lives that we want to give thanks to God for. The people in our lives that we want to give thanks to God for. For all things, all good things come from God. Our lives come from God. God has our lives in His hand. And He's teaching us. He's blessing us. Because ultimately, He wants our lives to be at a place where He had designed it. A place of His blessings, a place of of eternity. Once again, acknowledge that all good things in our lives comes from God. We do not possess anything of our own that we can give to God, but of His own, we give back to Him. But it is an act of offering that reflects our heart, that reflects our attitudes, reflects our worship, reflects our love. May God be pleased with our attitudes and our thoughts and may God bring glory back unto himself in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen you're all very welcome here this morning uh, there isn't that much notices this morning really uh, I believe there's only one key notice, apart from the welcome, okay, it's only really one key notice, which is uh, the ladies fellowship, the ladies are having a Christmas party, why aren't the brothers having a Christmas party too, eh? I think we should organize one for the brothers as well, but anyway, the ladies are having a Christmas party in Clonny next week, is it next week, yes, 9th of December, okay, so if you're a uh, if you consider yourself uh, from the ladies' group, okay, do sign up. Do talk to Sister Amy or Sister Jigun, okay, and sign up for a wonderful time. Happens every year, right, ladies? Yeah, always a good time. Okay, God bless you to have a great time again this year. Okay, no other real key notices. Okay, you all know your duty ro roster. Serve God with all your heart, serve God with all your attitude and all your willingness, and God in turn will bless your life. Okay. We have a special guest today, Sister Chung Hua from Our Daily Bread. Okay, and you have seen her display table outside with all the Daily Bread materials in Chinese, in English. And, uh, and I think some of you have been receiving, isn't that right? Because every, every, every season we get a whole box of materials from our daily bread. So some of you are reading it. Okay, some of you need to pick up that habit. Okay, I'm going to give time for Sister Chung Hua to come up and just to encourage us with a few words. Let's welcome her. Hello, thank you so much for, first of all, uh, Reverend Cedric, and thank you so much for all of you. And I was sitting there, I just so touched by you, and I believe the Holy Spirit as well. I never received such warm welcome from any churches. I've been to many churches, conferences, both north and south, but I mean, at this place, it's just amazing. Thank you so, so much. I never felt I'm a stranger coming in this place. 
and I trust that God bless you with this beautiful building and your warm heart and you're willing to serve the Lord and I trust God will bless you. Thank you again for this opportunity to come this morning to share about this ministry called Our Daily Bread Ministries in Ireland. My name is Chiang Hua, originally from South Korea and I am working in the office present this ministry <clears throat> within Republic of Ireland. So before I just give some ideas what kind of books I can encourage you to read. Uh, myself, if I give a little story, testimony about myself, I was born in South Korea. I became a Christian uh, in 1983. I brought up in Buddhist home, maybe some of you I don't know. So when I was a little girl, I never really hear about Jesus Christ or the way of salvation. Because of a Buddhism background, I used to believe reincarnation. So when I was a little girl, I always kind of had a fear that if I do wrong things and I knew that I will be born again as a very low creature of animal. So I had a great fear and a great fear of darkness. I, well, I really even dare to go out when darkness comes. So I just lived with such kind of fear, but I was a good person, and I really believed that I was a good girl, good friend, and good daughter. In 1983, one day I had a dream. I told you I never heard the gospel, but I had a very special dream. And that dream, I saw Jesus came to my life, and I didn't see his face, but I saw his foot, his long garment stood before me. And in that dream, even I didn't know about Jesus. And I knew this is the Jesus who loves me so much and who knows me. So that's all about my dream. And I got up, but I just couldn't get away from that dream. Somehow, there was a great desire to go to church. So I went. Uh, it, I think it was a Wednesday service. So I just walk in. Church was full. And I sat the very front seat. And after an hour service, and I just opened my eyes, come to reality that where I am, I was sitting, and service was finished. So I felt a bit embarrassed being in a church. So I kind of hurried to go out. But that moment, that's my experience, I just wasn't able to get up. I felt I would just stick to the chair. Then suddenly my mouth was open. I started to cry. I started to confess my sin. The God, the Holy Spirit, showed me that I was a sinner. I thought that I was good, but I remember things, even the little lie or stealing things. All I remember and I confess, ask God to forgive me. So that was my first step, become a Christian. I believe God saved that night. And I used to work in Korean nuclear power plants for many, many years. And, but I felt God called me to his service. So I gave up everything. I moved into Ireland here to study. Then God called me back. I was working in north side of Dublin with the CEF, Child Evangelism or Fellowship, for 14 years. And they got open another door to working with our daily bread ministries. So this is my testimony. Now I'm working at our daily bread almost 10 years. They open Irish office, which is in Sandy Mount, Dublin 4. And our main uh, booklet is we produce our daily bread. This is a small devotional booklet. And we also have our daily journey. This is more kind of a geared to young people to read. It's more deeper than our daily bread, but have a very good sound teaching in it. So I usually encourage young people to read the scriptures. It is great to get to know, but you know, the Bible says, how can young people, young men keep pure? There's nothing else but the word of God. So if you are a born again Christian, you need to feed the word of God. You know, we look after ourselves outwardly, we eat nice food, but consider your spirit inside. We need to feed as well. So 
I've been a Christian for many years, and I know it is not easy just to grab the Bible to read. That's why we introduce our daily bread. This is not a Bible. This is only a tool to encourage people to read the scriptures. Only five minutes, even, you know, just right up your bed or even sitting in the toilet. You still can read, and during the day, you can meditate to the Word of God. That's the way. The Word of God is light, lamp and light to our paths. The Word of God keeps you safe as well. So if you never try, grab one, start it, read the scriptures, and really believe that you will grow in spiritually. And also, I have uh, some booklet behind. We produce different titles of books, but they are all for Christian. It's a personal Bible study. I'm telling you, it's a very sound teaching. So you, whatever title struggling going through, this is uh, the forgiveness of God. Although we are Christian, there are many Christians still uh, under this kind of uh, for forgiveness, still guilty of their sin, and it helps us to study Bible yourself as well. The different uh, titles outside, or if not there, you let me know. We can uh, provide for you. We have over 200 different titles for personal Bible notes. Uh, because it's Christmas coming, I brought this Christmas all about the family. This is a truck leaflet. If you have a non-Christian friend, this is very easy to slip into your Christmas card and pass on and explain about what the Christmas is. Also, if you have a non-Christian, this is our daily bread, in introductory, but this is a very good for evangelism as well. I know some people say, it, oh, they're too long, but I realize that if uh, there are people who are searching for the truth, and it doesn't matter long or short, they will still read. So you can use even our daily bread. People can trust the Lord as well. As I'm working in the office, many people phoned a pop in. It's just an amazing story. They phoned how they encouraged. I shared one story. This guy, alcoholic for 30 years, walking around Oakland Street, Dublin, ups and downs. And one day he found our daily bread on top of one of the beans. Can you believe that? And he saw it stuck in the bin. And he picked it up. Hence, he started reading. And he read by about uh, a year. First time he read it, and he sent a form, I want to receive our daily bread. So he been receiving for a year, and he visited my office, explained how he became a Christian as he read our daily bread. So the word of God has a power itself. It's living and active. So I encourage you to read the scriptures, and this will help you. Also, if you have uh, your friend who is not really good to speak English, but they're Chinese, and uh, this is, I don't know about Chinese, but it look, by picture, is a food for the soul, this evangelism. You can grab one, you can share it, and also our daily bread. There's a lot of materials out there, so do have a look. Suitable for any age, you know, there are some, as I say, some deeper materials, uh, some introductory materials, you know, get to... Use those materials for your own growth and also to use that to evangelize. You know, Christmas, Christmas is, the, is a wonderful season. But we all know that Christmas is the start of God's salvation plan in action. Isn't that right? It's when he started, when he, he had pre prepared all along his plan of his son coming to save the world. And Christmas, the first Christmas, is the first step. It's the beginning of God's amazing plan. It's the first move in the world's greatest game plan, somebody said. And the question I ask you today is, are we playing a part in this movement? Do you want to play a part in God's plan for the world around us? Do you want to be part of God's plan around us? Well, actually, if you think about that question, the answer is really a no-brainer. You know what, what the word no-brainer means? It means you don't need to think about it. You know, if I ask you, do you want to be part of God's plan? Well, the reality is that God's plan is the only plan going because God is sovereign. God is in control. There is no other plan. So if we are not part of God's plan, we find ourselves 
fighting against the inevitable. Okay. Joseph and Mary, we read in the Bible, was chosen by God, was called by God to play a very significant part in His plan, in the salvation plan. Joseph and Mary was chosen to be the earthly parents of our Lord Jesus. To be the two people that were to bring up our Savior as a baby into adulthood. Think about that responsibility. Think about that challenge to be parents to the Savior, to be parents to God's Son. If I were asked to select who would be suitable to be parents of God's Son, you know, I would probably be looking for, you know, things like qualification. You know, does Mary and Joseph, do they have, you know, a double PhD in child psychology and children development still science? You know, I'll be looking for things like significant past experiences, right, your job descriptions. You know, have these two people been successful in bringing up children who are now kings and presidents around the world? Significant work experiences or qualification. Or are they wealthy people with good network so that when the kid grows up, we can, you know, good network, get them into the best schools, the best, you know, alumni network, good job opportunities. You know? Actually, think about it. Joseph and Mary, and none of this. Didn't have any qualification. Didn't have any wealth. Mary was a virgin, didn't have any child up, uh, bringing up experiences. So why did God choose Mary and Joseph? If we understand that, then we can understand how we can also be chosen by God. Okay. Let's look at the video. Is there a video for us to look at?
Why was Mary and Joseph chosen? What made them so special to be chosen by God? And if we desire to be part of God's plan, how can we also be chosen by God to fulfill what he wants to do on earth? Let's have a look at Mary. Let's look at a passage of scripture in Luke chapter 1. Verse 26 to verse 38. Luke chapter 1, verse uh, 26 to 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. See, the evidence pointed Mary to be a girl who is humble, who has a good Jewish upbringing, And she was a descendant of King David. Mary from the town of Nazareth. Do you know what Nazareth Nazareth is famous for? Nazareth is famous for its sins. Nazareth is a small town, for for, for your information, near a Roman garrison. And so at the weekends, at the, the day off of the soldiers, They will all go to Nazareth for what? For cheap wine, for prostitutes. So it was a town of sin. And indeed, elsewhere in scripture, the Jews always have this common. Can anything good come out of that city? Can anything good come out of that place? And yet in that place of sin and of darkness, we found a girl, a young girl, whom God chose. Some people were under the impression that Mary was chosen because 
you know, what I have said just now, that it, it, it seems to imply that she was pure and righteous, you know, immaculate. You, you, you come across this word you, uh, quite a lot in, in Ireland. Okay. Immaculate, sinless. Okay. But let's look at what Scripture says. Scripture says in verse 28, which is read just now. Verse 28, what is this? Is the angel went to her and said, Greeting you who are highly favored. What does the word highly favored mean? In Chinese, you see, if you have a Chinese English Bible, you see the translation there. It means that you have received great grace. You have been graciously chosen. What does grace mean? We've been preaching on this for a quite a number of weeks already. Grace means that you receive the good that you did not deserve. So when the Bible says, the angel said to Mary, you who have received great grace, you who are highly favored, really means that you actually don't deserve this. So this is the first thing we learn. How do we get chosen by God? Not because we deserve to be chosen by God. We don't deserve to be chosen by God. The question is whether we are willing to be chosen by God. Whether we want to be part of God's plan. If you think about what Mary has gone through, you look at the song that we have heard and you read the story, you see Mary's first attitude is, it's not about me. It is about God's plan. It's not about me. That's the first attitude we learn from Mary. A humility, a humbleness that says that my life, how I want to live my life, what I want to do, is not about me. It's about God. As I said just now, there is only one plan going in this world. There is only one plan that is going to come true. And that is God's plan. That is what we understand by God's sovereignty. God is in control. Even our life, there is only one plan in each of our lives. There is only one way God is going to allow our lives to end up because he's in control. If we fight against that, who's going to win? You fight against God, who's going to win? Of course God is going to win. So our attitude that we learn from Mary is, it's not about me, it's about God. You look at Mary's response in verse 29, and you see, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered, what kind of greetings? You know, the angels come and says, hey, you, you are highly favored by God. You're kind of shocked. You see, her humility, her humility wasn't, oh yeah, I've been waiting for this a long time. I know I'm a good girl. I know I'm a good boy. It's about time, God, that you come and choose me. Yeah? How many of us feel like that? I want to serve God. Why doesn't the pastor call me? Why doesn't the elders select me? Why doesn't they appoint me as deacon, elders, and pastors? I deserve. I'm so good. I'm so knowledgeable. I'm, but Mary, she was shocked. She was wondering. You know, it's almost like when headmaster come and say, please come into my office. You can say, what's that about? You never thought, oh, headmaster, come and call me into the office to give me a present because I've been a good boy. Okay, because you have a guilty conscience, right? And you say, something must be not right. And Mary was like that. She knew she did not deserve. She has the humility. It's not about her. Okay? She knew that the greetings that the angel gave her, you who are highly favored, she knew that she did not deserve that. That is the first attitude where you want to be chosen by God, you need to have that kind of humility to recognize that you're a sinner, we are sinners, and that if God chooses us, it is by his grace. Mary called herself the slave girl, the slave maid. If you read the Bible later on, verse 48, she called herself, I am the maid servant, I am the slave girl. But God chose her. What is another point that we can be encouraged by Mary? Mary, the first point was that it says it's not about me, it's about God. The second point is that it is not whether I know how, it's because God knows how. It's a faith 
that looks for more instruction from God. When the angel said, what the angel said was so overwhelming and so incomprehensible to Mary. Mary said, how can that be? I'm a virgin. I don't understand any of these. But you see, what we did not read in the Bible, what we did not read is for Mary to ask for more evidence. Isn't that some of us do? God said, go, you go be a missionary. Or like I said, you go and serve this organization. You go and leave your country. And, and we sit there and say, God, give me more signs. Give me more evidence. We choose to prefer to be like Gideon, who says, God, I lay my fleece. And you show me, once you show me, I follow. But as you see from Gideon, even this doubt, God showed him once, he still didn't believe. He has asked God for twice. And even then, he was reluctant. Mary says, it's not about me. It's about him. Mary also said, it's not about whether I understand. It's because God says so, and I will follow. But you do think about what we have heard from the song. Mary wasn't ignorant. Mary wasn't stupid. Mary knew, and I'm sure she knew, because it is in a culture where if you are a single young lady who is pregnant, who is not yet married, that you'll be outcasted. You're likely to even be stoned to death. Nobody will walk near you. Nobody will walk with you. Nobody will accept you. You'll be rejected. The Bible did not tell us that Mary worried about those things. I'm sure she did. But she was willing to accept it. It's not about whether we can face all these difficulties. It's about whether we are willing. Whether we are willing to obey God, to follow God. If necessary, to suffer ridicule, to suffer contempt, to suffer loneliness. You know, God doesn't force the choice on Mary. God doesn't force anything upon us. God is asking us whether we're willing, whether we're willing to be a part of God's plan. Look at Mary, look at Joseph. Such a heavy responsibility to be given the Son of God to raise for 33 years, so for, for, for all these years, to be the parents, to be the earthly influence of the Son of God. Mary, a young girl, in those days, not educated. What a daunting task. She was willing. So it's not about me. It's not what I understand. It's not whether I can or not. And her simple response in verse 38, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Simple. I am God's servant. Whatever you say, God, be it so. I don't understand. I don't know. I don't know if I can. I, I can't explain anything. I know it's hard, but be it so. What is God saying to you today? What is God saying to be part of his plan? Choices you have to make, decisions about your life, about your future. Whether it's a small step, whether it's a big step, God is saying something to you. Are you going to question? Are you going to say, why God? Why? Are you going to say, it's hard. How can I succeed? I'll struggle. It's none of that. Mary just simply said, may it be so, as you have said. For I am the Lord's servant. Well, what about Joseph? We haven't looked at Joseph. Okay? We still got a few minutes. Let's look at Matthew chapter 1. We quickly go through that because we need to approach the Lord's table as well today. Matthew chapter 1, starting from verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. 
But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. We see very much the same lesson from Joseph a little bit more that we can share today. Because whereas Mary had no plans, Mary just was too shocked probably. She said, well, I don't know what to do. Okay, I'm willing to follow God. But Joseph, he thought about it. He had a plan. He says he's going to divorce her quietly. See, some of us have gone beyond the innocence of Mary and have the wisdom of Joseph, or we, so we think. We made our plans, even how we serve God, even how we fit into God's, pl God's plan. We say, this is what we're going to do. This is what, how I'm going to do it. What if God says to you, no? What if God says to you, your plan is, uh-oh, no, no, your plan is faulty. Okay. Don't go that way. Go my way. Will we struggle against that? Will we do the right thing no matter how we feel? You know, I'm sure Joseph, Joseph was just a man. Joseph had all these doubts because this is a time before the angel talked to him. Joseph had all these doubts. How can it be? My wife, it is my wife to be, and now she's pregnant. Okay? She tells me it's a miracle from God. How am I supposed to believe that? She has her doubts. She has her, as it, divorce her quietly, honorable. Let's move on in life. Okay? But God says, no, face what I ask you to face. Face God's plan. We cannot run away from God's plan. Jonah tried it. Jonah tried to run away from God's plan. Look how he ended up in the belly of a whale. Don't run away. God's plan may be hard. God says, change your life this way. Go over there. And you say, God, it is hard. It is shameful. Everybody will be talking, talking about me, criticizing me. I'll be the laughing stock. God says, face it. Do the right thing no matter how we feel. Do the right thing no matter whether we understand or not. God's way is higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. How can we ask God, God, let me understand? God says, can you really understand? Even if I explain everything to you, can you really understand? You who are mortal men and women, try to understand the mind of God. No, we do what is right, no matter how we feel. We do what is right, no matter if we understand or not. And we do what is right, no matter what other people say. I'm sure, as these two young people, Joseph and Mary, follow God and took the step, I'm sure, it's not a fairy tale. It's not pure happy ending like you see in cartoons. So there are people talking. There are people laughing at them. There are people shunning them. There will be friends who don't want to talk to them anymore. There will be relatives who don't believe them. Their lives would be miserable. Their lives would be unpleasant. But they chose. They are willing to choose. And in the end, the blessings that we've received from God is for eternity. Now we see down the century as the two people that took a great part in enabling God's plan to come true on earth, to be the earthly parents. Now I don't know, as I sit here, look at you, some of you young people, some of you not so young, 
Okay, definitely, if you are young people, God has a great calling for you. Those of us who are not so young, oh, no, you never know, God still has a big calling for us. Okay. Remember Moses only started his real work when he was 80? None of us here is 80 years old yet. Okay. Some of us, some of you, will be great role, will play great roles in God's plan. But it depends on your response. doesn't matter where you are now. You are now maybe in a position where you say, oh God, what a mess. Right? Your life is in a mess. Of your own doing maybe even. doesn't matter. It does not matter. Responding to God is not because you deserve it. It's because of God's grace. In fact, if you come and tell me that I'm ready now, I'm perfect, I'm ready, everything's sorted, I say, you're back of the queue, please. Huh? God doesn't call people who are so ready in themselves. It's a humble, willing attitude. And I ask you to come to the Lord's table today, it's this final act of worship this morning, with that same attitude. You receive the Lord Jesus into your life. Okay. It's open to those who are Christians who have been baptized. Please, if you're not yet baptized, we ask you to wait, receive your baptismal instruction before you come for the Holy Communion table. But if you are a Christian and you've been baptized, whatever background you're from, whatever church you come from, welcome to join us. When the usher indicates to you, you come out, and you take the bread, and you take the cup, and you go back, and you sit down, and you pray, okay, and you wait, and when everybody receives it, I will lead you to take the communion together. Okay. But in this time, pray. You want to receive God. You want to, receive, you want to respond to Him. You want to be part of God's plan. You want God to call you. Are you willing? Are you willing? Willing. Not do you understand. Not do you think you can. Not because you are ready. Sinners that we all are. But are we willing? Can we truly say, like what Mary said, I am your servant. May it be to me as you have said. Let's prepare ourselves for our communion. For this is to remember our Lord Jesus, what He has done for us. For we remember that on the night that He was betrayed, He took bread, broke it, gave thanks. He said, this is my body, broken for you. Take it and eat it. Do it as often in remembrance of me. Same way after supper, he took the cup. He blessed it and said, This is my blood poured out for you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you. Take it and drink it as often as you do in remembrance of me. For when we take of this bread and take of this cup, we proclaim his death until he returns. Brothers and sisters, we remember him. And as we remember, we respond to his calling. To be his disciple, to be his vessels on earth, to be his church. Are we willing? The Lamb who bears our sins away, slain for us. And we remember the promise made that all who come in faith find forgiveness at the cross. Our sins away, 
slain for us and we remember the promise made that all who come in faith find forgiveness at the cross so we share bread of life and we drink of his sacrifice as a sign of our bonds of peace around the table of the Savior Jesus Christ torn for you eat and remember the wounds that heal the death that brings us life pay the price to make us one so we share every stain of sin shed for you drink and remember he drink that's cup that all may enter in to receive the life of God so we share spread of life and we drink of this sacrifice as a sign of a bonds of grace around the table of the Remember the body, the broken body of our Lord, broken to pay for our transgression, suffering to pay for our sins, that in His brokenness we can be made whole, physically whole, emotionally whole, spiritually whole. Let us with thanksgiving, let us with gratitude. Let us partake of the bread together in remembrance of Christ. Let us eat of the bread together. The blood of Christ that took away our sins, that washed us clean, the blood of the new covenant, the blood that was shed so that we do not have to face the wrath of God. Let us with gratitude, with thanksgiving, remember what Christ has done for us on the cross, the blood that was shed for us. Let us drink of the cup together. We give thanks to God for what He has done for us. We give thanks to Christ for His suffering on the cross, the broken body and the shedding of the blood. And we give thanks to God for His great eternal salvation plan let us respond to him want to be part of that let us respond to him as our 
reading today from Mary about Mary. What is it taught us? Our response will be, "I am the Lord's servant. May what you have said may it be so in my life." In His name we pray. Amen. Ushers can collect the cups. And so with thankfulness and faith we rise to respond And to remember our call to follow in the steps of Christ As His body here on earth As we share the blessings of our God as we depart from this place and as we made our response to God may he hear us may he take our lives and use our lives greatly as part of his plan for his glory let us once again be determined to obey God to do what is right no matter how we feel no matter what we understand no matter what our own plans are. As we go from this place, go in the strength of our God, in His love, to love one another, to be the people that God wants you to be, to say the words that He wants you to say and do the things He wants you to do. To give glory to Him and to bring blessing to others. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Father God the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with each one of you this day and always. God bless you. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great week. Amen. As we share in His suffering we proclaim Christ will come again and will join Oh, Lord.